Hey, Jared. Hey, Sam. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? Nice office. Thank you. Thank you. This is office <laughs> in progress. How Absolutely. are things with you? Good. Good. It's almost like we had a conversation right before I pressed play. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. figure. <laughs> no, I'm just bugging you. Um, so we're here. We're recording. Why do you think I asked you to record um, to do this video for my third and my fourth year of accounting majors? I think the main reason you asked me to come record this is I can provide a different view on how I've used my accounting degree. Um, and specifically, I've, how I've come to you and talked to you about what I wanted to do with my degree. Um, I've been direct with you about my thoughts on accounting, uh, where I see myself in the future, and really talking about my company and uh, bounce ideas off you, get feedback, and it's really helped me move forward in the future. So I think me being able to share those, those conversations that we've had and what I've done in the past uh, can help benefit some of your students. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's likely a number of people here that either want to definitely do accounting, maybe definitely don't want to do accounting and a range in between and who may think, oh crap, if I don't, if I don't, if I'm pretty sure I don't want to do accounting, but I'm in an accounting major, what am I supposed to be doing? Do I need to switch? Do I need to go do an entrepreneurship degree? Do I need to go do a marketing degree? Do I need to, you know, to extend my classes by another year? But one of the things that I thought was so amazing when we first really um, started talking was that you were an accounting major. You had no plans on changing from an accounting major, but you knew that you didn't want to do your CPA and you didn't want to be a quote accountant. Is that fair? It's completely fair. Yep. Yeah. And that would have been towards the end of your third year, I feel like. Yeah, just a little over a year ago now. A little over. Yeah, two years, right? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. So maybe even because you graduate. No, two years, two years. Two years yeah, yeah, sorry, the timeline because yeah. you graduated. Um, so that's why I asked you to do this video. Now let's make sure we go backwards because uh, linear is definitely overrated. So tell me about what you're doing now. But before that, um, you graduated when? Five years April, ago, 10 years ago? Uh, pretty much almost a year ago now, April 2020. April 2020. Pandemic um, strikes. I, pardon me? <laughs> right when the pandemic hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. You were either in my second last class uh, in person ever or my last last class. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, okay, accounting major, graduated last year. What have you been doing since? Well, in my last semester of accounting, that's when I really started figuring out that I didn't want to do the whole CPA route, work in an accounting firm. Um, so I started exploring other options. I had already started thinking about my pack, the business I'm working on. And so with that, there's this one program at Dell called Ready to Launch that I had applied for, and that really got the ball rolling for me. And so that Ready to Launch program was a three month long program where um, due to COVID it was online, but usually it's in person. And so they give you some living expenses. So I knew I'd be covered there just to pay rent and buy groceries, go out with friends and whatnot. Um, but it also gives you tons of great business advice and how to start up a business. So a lot of the accelerators in Halifax are one step further than just having an idea. But this great thing about Ready to Launch is that they take that idea, they help you figure out like a market size, they help you figure out the customer, they develop a business plan and really grow that business um, so that you're ready for like the next step and get into all these future accelerators. So I did that over the summer. Everything went great. We had a big final pitch day that some of my friends attended, Sam attended. It was great. It was awesome. Had a lot of fun with that. And that really unlocked the, the doors for the next chapter of my pack, which was getting into the Amira Idea Hub, which is all also a Dell affiliated. Um, great place about, or the great thing about them is that they're a hardware, software makerspace. So they're down on the engineering campus and they have 3D printer rooms, electronics rooms. Uh, they have on site engineers for advice. They've got office space there. So that once COVID passes, uh, I'll be working out of there. Um, and then connecting with other startups in there and they really it's really a great community just to get together and grow your company and so yeah i mean this past summer so when we first connected about two years ago mm -hmm. uh and then talking over that summer so the summer between your third and fourth year you were already working on my pack so you yeah. were already working on the first iteration i believe you your co-op term your last co-op term was 50 50 so 50 percent yeah. working was it mornings or afternoons 
Uh, we did kind of half the week, half the week. So. And uh, so working with a local company and then half the week working on your, on my pack, on your business. Um, so as an entrepreneurial um, uh, endeavor, how, can you just spend a brief moment and kind of say like, how was that? Like, how was your experience doing that as your last co-op term? Was it, you know, just give your honest assessment. Cause I actually don't think I ever asked you how that went. So I'm <laughs> interested. Um, was it difficult to set up with um, MCS or not MCS? Well, was it difficult to set up? Like what were some challenges and how did that end up going? So I was really lucky the way I did it. Um, the person I did the co-op with is also the co-founder I'm working with now. Um, so when I approached them about the, the concept of doing this half and half, they were completely open to it because we've already talked about the business before. Um, so I did half of my week, Monday, Tuesday, half of Wednesday doing accounting work for them and the other half working on my pack. Um, and what I found is I, I enjoyed doing the accounting work, but my mind was constantly racing about what do I need to do for the company? What do, what's the next thing I need to work on? So yeah, I, probably, I can, I can definitely attest yeah. to that because I remember meeting up with you, I think once, uh, during the summer, cause mm -hmm. I, you are, were friends with my co-op student at the time and meeting up and then, um, you made, I was so excited to hear about your business, um, but I first had to sign the non-disclosure agreement. So yes. I, <laughs> I just signed my life away and uh, then I got to hear about your business, which I'm sure we'll talk about in just a moment. And every time like you brought the research um, and we're all, we're really getting into the market trends and yeah, I could tell that this uh, was your healthy obsession, right? So sure. uh, <laughs> accounting was kind of what you were doing um, and you, you said to me that what really struck me is you're like, I want to have a solid foundation of knowledge and I can see accounting being applicable, but it's not what I only want to do. I want to use it as a tool. Is that a fair kind of summary of one of those earlier conversations? Completely. Like you said, like the reason I chose not to do the entrepreneurship classes is that for that foundation of knowledge with accounting, I know that accounting is super useful. There's tons of applications with it. Um, it's given me an advantage with the startup business I have now. I'm just being able to work through some of the books, just having that general knowledge of how a business kind of functions and how to set it up kind of for growth and how to oversee everything. Um, it's, yeah, it's completely super valuable here. Yeah, the language <laughs> of business. Um, yeah. Was it without frustration though? Like, did you, were you super excited to do um, intermediate financial accounting too and advanced accounting too? Like, was it just jolly times, every single homework assignment and exam? I can say, honestly, it was really rough. <laughs> um, the final semester was by far the hardest, but I had a good support group there, mm -hmm. my friends. Like, I knew all that had to be done. Um, I know it wasn't, I wasn't gonna do some crazy success story where I drop out of school last year because I'm so confident. I knew that having the, the accounting degree is a great thing to obtain. Um, and then I think I've joked around this before, like worst case scenario, if things don't go well, I have an accounting degree. There's still going to be options there for me in the future. I, and I mean, like, it's, that's an awesome case scenario, right? In the sense okay. that it's such a, a solid foundation to kind of choose, choose what you want mm -hmm. to do. And I joke about the last semester because um, had the pandemic shut down classes just a few weeks sooner, you wouldn't have had to do the really big test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <for sure. laughs> where it's like the, like legit the biggest test um but there's something to be said one of the people uh that i spoke to a couple of weeks ago uh she works with a company that has i believe 68 companies that consolidate into one and she's like it's the same principles just as your class it's just 68 companies so oh. like you learn real stuff you are so um fluent in the language of business and being confident in picking up financial statements and what they mean and how to communicate them with different audiences mm -hmm. um can you speak to that a little bit like how you seen um, accounting like principles or accounting through your classes and then how have you used that to shape your pitches how have you used it to speak to potential investors like how, what's that been like oh it's super valuable like i'd say the two biggest parties that it's benefited me from is talking to on um, zach my my engineer um, and also to people investors um any like halifax um, grant uh, location like nsbi nova scotia business corporation ACOA, coa national research center having that accounting background really benefits me because we are essentially talking about money um, and so they want to be confident that when they're granting 
these loans or these these grants um, that the person knows what to do with them. It's not just going to sit and be unaccounted for. Yeah. Um, and so with them, it's super valuable because I can say like I have the accounting background. I know what to do with the money. I have like a plan, like a budget already prepared for it. Um, but then for the engineers, if we're trying to purchase materials or something, I can kind of talk to them through plain English, but using like the accounting um, rules and principles and be like, listen, like if we're purchasing, say these materials, this is what we need to do with it. Or just the other day, like when we purchased a laptop, it was like, how do we account for this? And I was able to say like, this is what we do. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Perfect. And yeah, so it's, it's a so wide <laughs> range, everything yeah. from talking to VCs um, and like, there's some present uh, presentations that you were telling me about who was there. And I was like, whoa, like that is, you know, you have to be on your game and being mm -hmm. able to speak to the, that level of financially sophisticated, you know, user. Um, and then also be able to translate, like you said, to your engineer who, you know, they're, they're brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. but they're also like, they're not, they're not trained like you and I. So being able to make sure that we are talking appropriately, um, huge skill. So we've talked about my pack. We've kind of hinted at what it is. Yeah. Uh, tell me, give me the, give me the full my pack. Um, Quick who elevator. are you? What are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, tell me. For sure. Well, my pack from when it started, from what you and I way, way back talked about is not what it is today. So I think talking about that journey could be insightful and useful and I think what we originally talked about was doing a subscription box company. So they were the big trend at the time, thought it'd be, it'd be really cool. Um, so the problem we were trying to solve then was how do we get people their personal care products in residence or at home in a convenient way for them. Um, so we would package a box with shampoo, conditioner, whatever you need and send it every month. Um, and so that's what I was actually working on during the co-op and exploring the market for that. And it was great and things were looking well, but I remember one day Sam, um, my partner Rod, and we sat down at getting coffee and we talked about it. And I forget, the idea just came up of doing like a vending machine style uh, business. And so I went home that night and really started exploring that because I, I really liked the sound of it. And so my pack kind of grew into this next level of a business uh, that we're working on today. And so our new goal as a business is to disrupt the plastic uh, industry and the packaging industry by eliminating the need for plastic uh, packaging for personal care products and cleaning products. And so we're creating this dispensing kiosk, similar to like a coffee machine or like a pop machine, but for products like shampoo and laundry detergent. Um, and so the goal is that you bring your reusable bottle to any of these kiosks, place the bottle under the kiosk, choose your product, choose your scent, and it refills into the bottle um, and you're good to go. And so we wanna get these in residences, apartment buildings, uh, gyms, nursing homes, pretty much any high density place that you can imagine. That's the, the goal for it. So you go from, you know, having a problem and, mm -hmm. um, you know, having a concept and then realizing that what that concept and problem that you were solving, you know, really uh, providing accessible uh, cleanliness products um, straight to, um, you know, straight to its recipients, you were able to solve that problem in multiple different ways, uh, incorporating, you know, trends. So trends we were seeing um, more sustainable, right? So we were going away from the subscription box because of the trends towards sustainability. And also I feel like you really resonated with that. Like you didn't want um, to have a whole bunch of packaging waste. So, and um, a barrier from that initial concept to solve the problem ended up being part of the new uh, and improved solution. So how can we go from minimizing waste to eliminating it and kind of incorporating that? I think that that's um, super, super just cool and innovative, right? For a lack of a better uh, term to throw in the buzzwords, but uh, you know, what could have been a huge hurdle ended up being part of the new solution. Um, so now you are in the sustainability tech space uh, and here in Halifax, which is, you know, growing and growing and growing. Um, and would it be fair to say you didn't have all the answers to your questions for a business, uh, business solution at the beginning? That's for sure. Yeah. And then what do you do? Just ask. Ask. <laughs> out there. And figure shit out along the way and ask yep. and research and iterate. Um, for the people that you know, face analysis paralysis that want to get it all right and know all the answers. Um, what advice would you have for them specifically? If they have an idea that's burning in, in their brain, like burning in their soul and they want to get it out, 
but they feel like they haven't done enough. Is there ever enough work that they can do to feel ready? I think we talked about this at one point because I was doing all this background research and I think you said to me, uh, done is better than perfect or something along those lines. And it's exactly, it's, yeah. It's super true, like just, just do it. Um, you'll learn along the way. You don't have to be perfect right out the gate. Nothing was, everything has gone through iterations um, and you build off all the mistakes. Um, yeah. Things that we're finding now with the machine, like we're learning from that. We just keep on trying and eventually we'll get it right. But yeah, it's, it's all, everything you learn is valuable along the way. Absolutely. Did you see the SpaceX launch yesterday? I did not, no. Oh my gosh, I will summarize it. I actually sent a link out to my uh, class today. Um, both of them, because I, I just love this, not only because I'm a super big Elon fan, sorry, I know, I know you're like him again, it's like, yes, him again, um, but because his engineers, so seven minutes and 35 seconds into kind of the launch, um, that was when you heard the, one of the like main control room for people. So essentially it launched, it did really good things. And then it was supposed to land because their whole thing is, well, you don't throw out a plane when you go from LA to New York. So why would you have to throw out like a rocket ship? I don't know, booster or whatever, rocket ship, um, every use. So they, they went up in the air and then they were coming down and they, they crashed. Um, but it's, it was a test launch. There weren't any people inside, but of course you just have, you know, what people could have viewed as a huge, you know, failure, like public failure. And you heard the engineer like recount everything that was going on. And then he's like, Hey, and yeah, we, we, we kind of, we messed up on the landing a little bit or like, we really like fudged the landing is like, look at all the things that we've learned and look at all the like iterations and look at all the data that we have, like, right. we'll get it right next time. Like just a different way of looking at this. Like, look at how far we've come and knowing that you have to, you know, you have to go through this. There's no failure. Yeah. Point. Yeah. And then is it even failure? Or I think it was Albert Einstein, you know, fail is first attempt in learning. Right. So, right. you know, first and second and third and. Yeah. So do the people that um, have that burning idea, just, just get going, just get started. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and the really cool thing um, that I've learned from you throughout this process is that there is a lot of support. There's a lot yeah. of like support, both for funding, but also like just the, the intellectual support. Um, can you elaborate a bit more on that? Like what kind of, like, how's that experience been? Uh, it's honestly, it's overwhelming. Um, anybody I reach out to here is offered to do mentor mentorships or kind of give advice through like Dalhousie itself. There's the two programs that I've done ready to launch and then the idea hub. Um, idea hub has been incredible recently. They connect you with like market researchers and then those relationships that I've built with these researchers, they continue to come back and send me more information. And they're like, have you seen this? Like the other day, somebody just sent me um, tar, the tear shop, which some of you may be familiar with, like they're expanding and you want to make sure I saw that. So send me a link to it. Um, there's the Halifax partnership, which has been superb. I'm speaking with a guy there named Minder who highly recommend if any of you want to bounce ideas off him, he, um, he prides himself on remembering these companies for five plus years. And even if you don't speak to him for over a year, he'll remember you and he'll come back to you. If uh, you think something's relevant. What's his name and where is he from? Minder like what? Singh, he's from Halifax Partnership. Um, so you reach out to them and they help connect companies with other companies or um, consultants and pretty much they help you try to solve your needs and figure out what you what they can do to help. Um, so they've been great. Um, so so, Jared, this is so fun. I feel like I'm learning um, new and new things because we meet yeah. monthly um, yeah. to, to discuss and bounce ideas off and see where, where you're at and whatnot. Um, and every month I, even before we started this, like, I'm like, oh, that's really neat. And oh, like, wow, like um, just going out and meeting people talking about your business. And, and I, this is my first time hearing about um, the Halifax partnership or re remembering in recent combos because there are just those volumes. So much, yeah. yeah. And once you get in, then you get referred and then you, you, you need the, the product and you need the passion and you need the work to be put in. But if you put it in, um, it will, you know, it'll come and it'll kind of be like that snowball, right? That snowball rolling yeah. down the hill. I gotta say the first thing that I forgot to mention that pretty much kickstarted all of this was um, at the row building, there's the Norman Newman Center, I think for mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. And one day I just walked in there during like during a lunch break and spoke to, uh, her name's Grace. I'm not sure if she's still there, but spoke to a girl named Grace and she's the one that's actually started me on the ready to launch journey. And that's what really got me started. So 
shout out to Grace. Amazing. Um, yeah, thank you. If Grace. you have an idea, go speak to her. She's great. Um, and then, yeah. but all it took was just yeah, wandering in there one day. And so utilizing um, the Dow, the Dow resources, utilizing the Dow connections, um, and then going from there and building building your own network and using your mm -hmm. alumni. Um, uh, connections. I remember you were the, one of the presentations uh, that I watched. Uh, it had a mix of business leaders as well as our dean was on uh, the evaluation panel, and yeah. it's um, it's nice. It's super nice to be a part of and see you kind of be a part of a community um, that is both Dal and is um, business and is you know it's not just one or the other. It's not theory and application. Like it's it's really just people, passionate people getting together and getting stuff done. It's a whole community for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are your future plans? What options are you considering? What's what's going on? Well, right now we're working on the prototype for our kiosk. So once that's done, we've already begun speaking to Dalhousie about doing a trial run there. And so if everything goes well, which I'm confident it will, um, then we'll be testing the prototype over the summer months. In one of the residences on campus or in the student unit building that's still be discussed. Um, and then from there, we'll be manufacturing our commercial versions of the machine. So I've been reaching out to universities across Canada, getting interest, um, getting kind of like pre-sales, if you will. Um, and so that when we know we have like, we've been telling them we have a limited amount of kiosks that we're gonna be ready for the next year. Do you want in pretty much? Um, so it's a lot of sales, I guess you could say, but then, growing as communication? well communication communication yeah relationship building definitely and so i was just telling sam right before we hopped on this or started recording that um i made a big call to this collision conference um that i was honestly pretty nervous about before the call and i figured it was way out of my league but all it took was just like i said just do it um, and they love the business and so i think we're gonna be featured in that now which is a huge step for us and who, who else has uh, presented at the collision conference uh, that historically has been held in Toronto? Who's Who's been there before? Anybody that we know? There's a couple of big names. Uh, we got, well, Trudeau was one of the speakers. There's Seth Rogen with his houseplant company. There's the CTO of Twitter. There's Margaret Atwood, the famous author. There's Shaquille O'Neal with his uh, investing firm. There's the co-founder of Slack. Uh, the list goes yeah, on. Yeah, I, I feel like I've heard of some of these people. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing. What exciting. And what I love is what you said um, is that you were nervous and then you did it anyway. Nerves are a signal that we care and we should really be doing things that we care about. So, and nerves are good, right? If we can kind of get that thing and do it anyways. Um, yeah. And what was going through your mind right before you did it, right when you were nervous? What made you do it anyways? It was similar to like what's been getting me through, like what's the worst that can happen? Like it's when yeah, it's I'm not, going. I'm not, <laughs> that's what's <laughs> happening right now. I'm going to, or, you know, like I'm not, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not working with them right now. I may as well call, make that connection or try. Exactly. And the worst that can happen is, you know, mm -hmm. I'm right where I am anyways. And so like with that, like I've been told no a couple of times for some applications, but the connection that I've made just reaching out and talking about it, it's valuable because the next time the application is open, I'm familiar with the person. They're willing to help me with the application. And so even though it's a no at that time, it turn, can turn into a yes in the future. Um, I get in trouble a little bit because when I hear no, I think not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so when I hear you say that, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I, you know, of course, there's a difference between like a hard no and a not yet. Um, right. And knowing the difference is, you know, um, is, is valuable too. But at the same time, figuring out that difference for yourself and just mm -hmm. pursuing um, and working with anything, just being genuine. Um, I think that, that goes a long ways and people people want to help people that are working hard. Definitely. Okay, so yeah. we're reaching the end. Thank you so much for being uh, super generous with your time. A um, few more things. Mm -hmm. We spoke about what advice would you have for Dallas students that have that burning idea but want to make it all perfect before they go. But in general, what um, what advice would you have for current Dell accounting majors in their third or fourth year, having just graduated from the program uh, less than a year ago yourself? Whether you want to pursue accounting or not pursue accounting, I think the most important thing is just to try it. Um, if you're going down the accounting road, it's great. Try to involve yourself with projects outside of accounting. 
you might fall in love with something. If you're hard on the accounting and you love it, that's what you know you want to do. That's great. Um, but really reach out to people outside the accounting market. You can apply that knowledge anywhere. Um, it could be valuable, like speak to smaller companies. If you're trying to sell, get like a company like myself to use your accounting service. Um, speak to us like outside of the accounting, like we love accounting too, but um, really just, I guess, bounce around some ideas with us. Like if you're not going the accounting route, that's great. Accounting is still useful. Like I said, like it's it benefits me almost every day with what I'm working on. Um, and small piece of advice is celebrate the small wins as big, as much as the big wins. It's what I found important because it keeps you going. Um, and yeah, just, just do it. Like I've, that, yeah. I think it's the, the biggest takeaway. No, no, no need to hesitate, I guess, especially in Halifax. Like there's tons of great opportunities out here. Everyone's supportive out here. The city is growing, businesses are growing with it. Um, and take advantage of it. Yeah, if you want an accounting job and you don't have one, start cold calling, start, you know, no. going for coffees, going for, you know, hey, I want to hear about your career. I want to hear about, you know, how did you get to where you were at? Do you like where you're at? Not saying, hey, I want to go for coffee and have a job, but like, no, I want to learn from you. Just I want to learn, learn like, yeah. I want to learn from your experience. How did you get to where you're at? And do you have any advice for anybody looking for a job, right? Mm -hmm. um, and making those connections and whether or not it's to pursue an accounting role or pursue business or uh, to, to meet people, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, like you said, the Halifax community is super supportive. Yeah. Um, what's your definition of success, Jared? Like my definition of success is it's almost like a day-to-day -day type of thing. Like trying to think about what I want to do for that day, getting it done, and then just being happy with it. If, uh, if it's a no, then accepting that and knowing that I'm still heading in the right direction. Um, like you said, like if you're nervous, it's a good sign. It means you're doing something right. You're making it, you're working out. Um, and so in the future, you talk about future success. For me, it's just, I'm very proud of like what I'm working on now. And so I want to be proud of something I build in the future. Um, and I just want to share that and share the knowledge, help out other, other people. So if anybody like wants to reach out and chat a little bit more about me, please feel free. I'd love to. Um, there's tons of stuff I can share, the resources I've used or people I've spoken to. I don't mind at all. It's, of course, yeah. But so. you sound like you're doing a lot of worky stuff. Do you, is there any room for fun or, or other people or like what's, what's going on there? That's uh, it's one of the most important things is having that balance. It's, um, so I think for me, like on the weekends, it is important to still think about work, especially in like this, this crunch time for me, but take time. I like to go on like hikes, if you will, like go to the bar with friends, have dinners. Uh, there's might be a couple of you that are watching this right now we might have plans coming up so <laughs> i hope to see you there <laughs> um but yeah I always find time to relax like even if it's just what i like to read for like part of the day while it's not directly considered my work it still gets the brain flowing and thinking creatively and outside the box and it's just absolutely. as valuable yeah absolutely it's nice to know that you're not in um a windowless office somewhere yeah. for 16 hours or 18 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, cranking it out that you do have time built in for mm -hmm. inspiration and connection. And like, you're, this isn't a fake smile, right? Like every yeah. time we talk, you're smiling. Sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a tired smile. Sometimes it's sure. like a, you know, exhilarated smile, but it's, it's important to, to feel with positivity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all that I have, um, because you have been so generous with your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, final comments, anything else to add, Jared? Like I said, like if anybody wants to reach out and chat afterwards or just to learn a little bit more about journey I've taken, please feel free. Um, I can't help you with any accounting assignments. So <laughs> <I'll try that. laughs> no, no, um, Fair. No, reach out to me with accounting and signing questions. I'd love to hear from you guys <laughs> and reach out to Jared. Um, LinkedIn, um, uh, my pack uh, email address, contact me for your contact info. What do you want to say? Um, email address is jared.hudson at mypack.ca. Feel free to email me. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. It's my name. Um, and yeah, anywhere you want. I think if you want to reach out to Sam for an introduction, that'd be great. Or I'm a pretty friendly person, so I don't mind uh, just chatting. Perfect. Thank you, Jared. No worries. Thank you, Sam.
A ver, 